You ever see a big health initiative and wonder, did that actually work? Well, today we're putting on our detective hats. We're not chasing a suspect, we're chasing the truth hidden in data. And trust me, the tools we're gonna use can literally save lives. Let's get into it. Okay, so picture this. There's a community and they've been hit hard by cholera. So a new water purification system is installed. Everyone feels like it's getting better. You hear good things on the street, but is that enough? How do we go from, I think it's working, to we know it's working? That's the million dollar question, right? And it's exactly what a public health detective has to figure out. And the main tool in our detective kit? It's called biostatistics. Sounds complicated, right? But it's not. All it really is, is using numbers and data to figure out what's going on with our health. It's how we spot the patterns, how we measure if a new medicine, or in our case, a new water filter, is actually making a difference. It's what turns guessing into knowing. Yeah, so if we're detectives, biostatistics is our fingerprint kit, our magnifying glass, our whole crime lab rolled into one. It's the magic that takes that gut feeling, you know, that, hey, I think fewer people are getting sick, and transforms it into cold, hard evidence. Proof. All right, so every good detective starts by looking for clues. In our world, a clue is what we call an association. It's just a fancy word for a link. We're trying to see if there's a connection between an exposure that's the thing we're interested in, like using the new water filter, and an outcome, which is the result, in this case, getting cholera or not. And boom, here's where the clues really start to pop. This little grid is called a two by two table, and it's a public health detective's best friend. Let's break it down. We've got our data from a thousand people. Look here, 500 people used the new filter and only 10 of them got sick. Now check this out. Of the 500 who used the old water, 50 got sick, whoa. Just by looking at these raw numbers, your detective senses should be tingling. We've definitely got a strong link here, a really clear association. Okay, but hold on. Super important detective role right here. Association is not causation. I'm going to say that again. Just because two things seem connected, it doesn't mean one caused the other. Think of it this way. Ice cream sales and drownings both go up in the summer. Does eating ice cream cause drownings? No. Finding this link, this association, is just the first clue. It points our investigation in the right direction. It's where the story begins, not where it ends. Okay, time to pull out our first high-tech tool from the kit. This one's called Relative Risk, or just RR for short. And what it does is answer a really simple but incredibly powerful question. How many times more or less likely is something to happen to one group compared to another? It's a game changer. So to make this whole process work for any investigation, we use this standard grid. The exposed group, that's our folks who use the new filter. The unexposed are the ones who didn't. Then we just give each box a nickname, A, B, C, and D. These are just placeholders to make the math super easy to follow. All right, let's do the math. It's easier than it looks, I promise. First, we figure out the risk for the exposed group, the ones with the filter. That's just A divided by the total for that row. So 10 sick people out of 500. That gives us a risk of 0 0.02, or 2%. Simple enough. Then we do the same for the unexposed group. That's 50 sick people out of 500, which is a risk of 0 0.10, or 10%. Now for the final step, we just divide the first number by the second. And what do we get when we do that? We get this, 0.2. That's it, that's our relative risk. It's just one little number, but believe me, it speaks volumes. So what in the world does 0.2 actually mean? This is the secret decoder ring. If the RR is one, it means there's no difference at all. If it's more than one, the exposure is risky. But if it's less than one, like ours, that means the exposure is protective. It's a good thing. So our RR of 0.2, it means the folks using the new filter had only 20% of the risk of getting cholera compared to the other group. I mean, that's an 80% drop in risk. That is huge. Okay, let's grab another tool from the kit. This one is called the odds ratio, or OR. It's a close cousin to relative risk, but it looks at the problem from a slightly different angle. Instead of comparing the risk, it compares the, well, the odds. Let me show you what I mean. And hey, good news. We used the exact same table. No new data needed. We're just gonna slice and dice it a little differently. So calculating odds is a bit different from risk. For our filter group, we take the number who got sick and divide it by the number who didn't get sick. So A divided by B. 
We do the same for the other group, C divided by D. Then we find the ratio of those two results. But pro tip, there's a super easy shortcut. You just cross multiply, A times D, and divide that by B times C. Way faster. So when we plug in our numbers from the cholera case, that's 10 times 450 divided by 490 times 50, we get an odds ratio of about 0.18. Now you might notice that's really, really close to our relative risk of 0.2. And that's actually a cool little statistical quirk. When you're studying something that doesn't happen very often, these two numbers will be almost identical. And guess what? The rules for interpreting it are exactly the same. If it's less than one, it's protective. So our 0.18 means the odds of getting cholera are way, way lower for the group with the filter. It's another piece of evidence screaming that this new system is working. Okay, so we've run the numbers, we've analyzed the clues, the evidence is piling up. Now it's time for the verdict. What does this all mean in the real world? This is the most important part. This is where numbers turn into action that saves lives. So you might be asking, why do we need two tools that seem so similar? Well, it all depends on how you set up your investigation. If you're doing what's called a cohort study, where you follow people forward in time to see what happens, relative risk is your go-to tool. But sometimes you have to work backwards. You start with a group of sick people and a group of healthy people and try to figure out what they did differently in the past. That's a case control study. And for that, the odds ratio is the only tool for the job. Two different tools for two different detective strategies. And this right here is why any of this matters. These numbers, they aren't just for textbooks. They're the reason we have policies that actually work. They are the why behind smoking bans, vaccine recommendations, and getting funding for clean water projects like the one in our example. It helps your doctor recommend the right treatment, and it helps you sift through all the crazy health headlines you see online. It takes a huge, complicated public health mystery and proves it can be solved. So there you have it. We started with a simple question about a water filter, and we ended up with a powerful set of tools that can change the world. You've seen how the detectives do it, so now I'm turning it over to you. The next time you see a news story about a new diet or a health study, you'll know what to look for. You've got the tools. So what mystery are you going to solve?